Hello, beautiful people. Here I am with the cosmic climate for the week of June 17th through the 23rd. I hope that this video finds you in a good space. I am currently visiting family and friends in Maryland, hence my Aurora Borealis background. I'm really digging this one as it is live. Like there's movement behind me and I feel in so much alignment with this background and it's really interesting um some of you may know that i have a connection with green tara and she was the first spirit guide that i was in awareness of like at, at that point i knew i had spirit guides or before that point i knew i had spirit guides however in 24 2015 2014 2015 I met her and she was, she was the first spirit guide that I was in awareness of. And she is everything to me. I was having a really intense dark night of the soul slash spiritual awakening. Um, even though I had one of those like 10 years prior, this particular awakening was honestly, if I could be quite frank and Aquarian with you, I feel that I experienced, I don't think it was a walk-in per se, but it was some, there was a very significant, that was who I was, this is who I am. And I, even after that experience, a few years later, there was more that happened in reference to what I experienced in the time that I met Green Tara. And I don't, I feel really called to just briefly share this story, but this was the moment in which I really, I began to do ritual work, spell work at that, well, not spell work, but doing rituals and doing spiritual practices and getting back into all of the, like the tarot, the astrology, because at that point, and this was, and like I said, 2014, 2015, I was just getting divorced or in the midst of a divorce. I was graduating from college. I was also going through my Saturn return. There was a lot happening and I was not happy with where I was or just emotionally as well, right? Everything, there was just so much happening. And mostly I wasn't really happy with my relationship situation of course going through a divorce and so I went to what I remember or I, I asked myself what was I doing when I was happy the most happiest and in a really good space what was I doing and it was doing rituals which at that time I don't I didn't really call them rituals I was just I had my moon my full moon nights with my coven and it was just three of us and doing what we were doing, casting spells, running around, being like playing with our tarot cards and, you know, just having dance parties and drinking wine and just having just so much fun. Specifically, we would make an intention to specifically do this around the time of the, the moon within the, like mainly the full moons, right? And I was doing tarot. And just having fun with crystals and all of those things and just wandering and being out in nature. And this was in Tacoma Park, Maryland, like right on the border of DC. So anyways, um, that was what I recalled myself doing when I was really happy. And at that time in 2014, 2015, as I was going through a divorce, I think it was 2015. Yeah, it was, it was the end of 2015. And I started getting back into it. I guess shortly before that, because my ex-husband, you know, was kind of warning me, hey, don't do this. This You don't want to mess with that stuff. You know, things are happening. Anyways, long story short, the reason why I'm saying this is that um, at that moment, once we finally separated, dissolved the marriage, I was living by myself. I had a possession, a demonic possession. And it was really scary. And there was a moment where I really felt like I couldn't even see straight. I can't even explain it. And when I think about it, it feels like I, I had this feeling like, did that actually happen? But I knew it happened because 
so much happened after that as a result of that, like as far as like moving out of the apartment because the apartment was where the energy was harboring and everything going on around that area, um, people ODing and it was it was crazy, it was a mess. And Green Tara at that time, I was doing, I had int was introduced to Green Tara, I was doing her practice, which included chants, singing, you know, there was music involved and, um, doing her mantras, of course. And so I had that protective shield and it just lined up so nicely, like so synchronistically. And I don't know what would have happened to me if I didn't have that, but it feels divinely planned in a weird way. And I needed to experience that in order to do what I'm doing now, to open myself up to channeling because I always had a fear of um, being possessed. It was a, a big block. And so I personally, not saying everyone has to experience that, but I personally experienced that. And thank goddess for Green Tara. She was my protective shield during that experience. And then she was my nurturer and brought me back to, or basically elevated me, like gave birth to a new version of me after all of that happened, because I was continuing to do her practice. And since then, I've been very connected with Green Tara. And I'm not a Buddhist person. You know, I do go to temples and things of that nature, but I don't really, um, I wouldn't consider myself to be Buddhist. And, but, I, and it's funny, I recently have really made a strong home in a, a Buddhist temple in my uh, my local area in New York. And I, you know, there's certain protocols that you have to go through where it's like, you have to be initiated and do all these things, which I did the initiation, the empowerment for Green Tara. And at the same time, I knew that I was like, I don't have to do this. Like, I'm not here for you. I don't need to seek a monk, you know, or a Rinpoche to connect with Green Tara. She honestly, she connect, she sought me out, if anything, right? Because I wouldn't have known to go looking for her. And definitely I wouldn't have looked towards Buddhism. I was really into uh, pagan witchcraft and, and Wicca and all of those things. So I was definitely not going that way. And so I'm so grateful. And to bring that all full circle, the Aurora Borealis is what makes me think of Green Tara because during the Green Tara empowerment, the Rinpoche that was there initiating us you know, he says that he gets asked this really, like this question a lot is like, why green? Why the color green for tar? And there are other colors such as white and red, but green tar is like the supreme or mainly what people, uh, you know, expect or envision when we say Tara. And um, he said to, he was like, you know, just look at the the essence, the experience, and, and what you see within the Aurora Borealis and that that color green and the way the sky is and just, yeah. So he correlated the Aurora, Aurora Borealis to specifically what's going on in my background to Green Tara. And so when I saw this, uh, I had to have it. So thank you for listening to that. All right. So here I am with the Cosmic Climate. Before I get into the Cosmic Climate, I do want to share that if you're watching this, before June 18th, I really, and I would love to have you. My friend also, Alyssa, would love to have you join us for our summer solstice virtual ceremony ritual circle in which we will come together and share on summer solstice. Alyssa and I will, you know, just talk briefly about the astronomy, the astrology, in the themes and symbolisms around summer solstice. And then we will do a meditation and a ritual together to welcome in sol summer solstice. So the actual summer solstice moment is on June 20th at 4.50 PM, I believe, which I'll be talking about. Um, so that this is really welcoming in this energy and what we do on Tuesday evening, so I, I don't know if I said, but it's at 8 p.m. Eastern time. What we're doing then will, um, you will be able to carry that into the summer solstice if you desire to do so. If not, this is a perfect way to come together and have your moment to be with this energy and be present with the cycles, the solar cycle, and then go on about your 
you know, lovely daily life. So I would love to have you. The link to sign up is in the description of this video. It is free to join with the option to donate if you would like to. And if you want to stay uh, up to date with these, you know, specials, updates, events, things of that nature, consider joining my email list. You can also do that via the description in this video. Also, I'm running a sale on my astrology readings and my tarot readings. And so if you want to book a reading with me right now, I'm offering 33% off. And let me just check guys, because I am just remembering this now about the sale <laughs> that I want to um, see. It will start as you're watching this. The sale is available. The discount code is what I'm looking for. So one brief moment, my friends. Let's see. Do, do, do. The coupon co code is solstice 24 and that'll be in the description of this video for 33 percent off tarot readings and my zoom both are via zoom tarot readings and the 75 minute astrology reading or consultation so i would love to connect with you that cell is going until the end of the week so if you have any questions about that feel free to comments below or email me, connect at uraniauniverse.com or message me on my website. All right, now on to the cosmic climate. So there is a lot going on this week, some really nice shifts happening. We have Venus and Mercury moving into Cancer on Monday, aka Moon Day, June 17th. And we have uh, summer, I was going to say June solstice, June solstice, summer solstice on June 20th. And yes, that's at 4.50 PM. And then the very next day we have the full moon in Capricorn, which ah, this energy is so powerful. I'm going to say what I am picking up for the energy of Venus in, in Cancer is the Empress energy. I'm really getting and, and with this, this particular full moon too, I'm getting the divine counterpart energy or more empress and emperor energy. Yes, divine masculine and divine feminine coming together, whether that is you within yourself or you within um, a, a connection, a partnership. But I feel like these energies are coming together and it could just be for the summer, right? The summer solstice, or not necessarily the summer solstice, but like the entire summer, or maybe there's a meeting that happens in the summer and then that carries on to something ongoing. It's it's really, I feel like it's really open, but I definitely feel, <clears throat> excuse me, that there are these energies coming together for preparation of what is to come in the near future. And I really like that Venus and Mercury are coming together in alignment. They're having their conjunction on June 17th. So they're coming together at zero degrees cancer. So if you have anything around zero degrees of cancer, Capricorn, Aries, or Libra, this is probably a pretty powerful time for you, I would say, in those particular areas of life. And if there are any placements there, um, definitely with those particular planetary placements. So let me show you the Oracle cards for this week, which they are amazing. And I hope I did bring them. Okay, yes, I did. It's like, do I have my things? All right, so the dominant energy is okay so i have this wonderful background and so i'm just going to leave this here so it doesn't mess it up but egotism and we have mars and leo we have the sun here we also have the scarab the egyptian scarab emblem i believe and then we have a rooster i was going to say another word but i'm going to be pc right now or maybe pg but yeah look at this i mean Let's see how close I can get it. Okay, there we go. Ego, egotism. The next oracle is Jupiter in 
Capricorn with control. We've gotten this card months ago. And when I, as soon as I saw this card, I felt the new earth, of course. I also, what stood out to me and what I, what I think what stood out to me initially when we received it before was what goes around comes around. And I have more to say about this, but I'm just giving you an overview of what we have here. And then we have the sun in Capricorn. Mm, it's being weird on the camera. With achievement. And I believe this is a golden ram. Let's see. Yeah, it is. Golden ram. I'm not quite sure of this medallion here, but look at that city. That's a very solid structure there. Like it really seems, it's not necessarily a fortress, but it's kind of giving me, I just had that thought, that vibe. So when I saw, when I saw these cards, I really, I sat with it for a moment because whenever I see that this particular card, I don't know for whatever reason, I just don't, I haven't really resonated with it until recently because I, I'm stuck on ego right? The ego, I'm just, and the, and the rooster with the man's head, it just feels very like ego-like, like very masculine in a way that is, you know, like the dark masculine, but not super dark, but just, I guess maybe the patriarchy is what I'm going for, but that's what I get with this card or when I initially saw it and then seeing control with Zeus and then more, and then this energy, I just really got this feeling of the patriarchy or just that kind of power and control. And I felt resistance. And in that moment of resistance, I got the intuitive, you know, message to look a little bit deeper. Like it's not what you think, right? And this is bringing us to the the energy or the the kind of the theme of this lunar cycle because we are still in Gemini's lunar cycle even as we you know transition into the solar season of Cancer we're still going to be in the lunar cycle or lunar season of Gemini and one of the main themes with with this Gemini lunar cycle is to you know, look or perceive through your intuition, look at the subtle energies or really feel, allow yourself to feel into the subtle energies. And that just came forth in that moment. And I, I just, I felt that to take a moment and to look closer. And I decided to read the interpretation of this, this card and when I went to the interpretation, which you can find the book interpretation in the community tab of my channel here, when I looked at the interpretation of this card, it really talked about creative expression and being, you know, confident in your expression and really from my understanding or the way I connected with their interpretation of it was to create, use your ego for what it's designed to do, right? Create with conviction, create with intention and don't be afraid to express yourself. So that was the message I got with this was to be courageous, be bold. And what's really standing out to me, you know, are the flowers, you know, everything, the rolling little hills that this rooster's on and the sun being there, right? The sun being there and that being you know, the connection to divine intelligence. And that is that masculine essence. I look at the feminine essence at times as a divine intuition, and then at masculine essence as divine intelligence, the sun being divine intelligence, the moon being divine intuition. And so I connect it more with that. And then of course, I cannot stray away from my Egyptian roots. And my, or my, well, yeah, I guess my Egyptian roots, but my Egyptian connection. And this is, oh, cool. I can get that up there. So this is the, the scarab. And it's a really interesting depiction of it because it's, oh, wow. So I'm actually seeing as well that this part, now the book said scarab. Right. So I wouldn't have looked at this and thought that this was a, a, a scarab. Sorry, you guys won't be able to see it. 
but on these two little sides there that there they are cobra cobra heads and one cobra each cobra has or one cobra has the the um not i don't want to say hat that's not the, the crown of lower egypt and then upper egypt so they're both there so i'm just noting noticing that in this moment of course i'm seeing the sun there and the sun's already on the car on this card so this really feels like that the summer solstice the energy that we're coming in into here and just like with the solstice here in the northern hemisphere this is when the sun is reaching its most northern extreme well it's summer here for us in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere it's going to be winter nonetheless as a global experience where as as earth itself we are perceiving or seeing the sun shining directly over the tropic of cancer which is you know cancer season right there's it, this is all about orientation and that this is like the sun and earth connection right and so with this it's it's the sun reaches its height its most northern extreme it stays there it appears to stand still for three days and then it's going to descend towards its lower or its southern extreme so it's the most lowest point and that can be considered as like underneath the earth, right? Or it's not under because it's in the zone of the tropics, right? But it's the lower point. So it's going into the Southern hemisphere, right? So this is just really interesting because here in the Northern hemisphere, summer solstice is like the height of the sun's journey, or I guess in a whole, doesn't matter, right? Um, the season is basically depicted of where you are at the time of that alignment, right? and how the earth is oriented oriented towards or away from the sun at that moment right so northern hemisphere war oriented towards the sun southern hemisphere is away right so initiating summer and winter and that's the thing it's the initiation point it's the invitation so yes this is the beginning of summer and at the same time it is the peak of summer will come around august like six something like that. You, it's celebrated traditionally in pagan traditions as August 1st as Lamas, which is the first of three harvest cycles or observances. And But as far as astronomically, that halfway point between summer solstice and the autumn equinox for the Northern Hemisphere is going to be around August 6th, right? And that's the peak of summer. That's the height of, or that's the peak of, of this season. And when we start to see the fruits of our, our labors come to fruition, so to speak, right? So I'm getting all of that, that, that peakness, that high energy, that maximum potential even with this card here. So we are being encouraged to step into our boldness, to create and express ourselves with confidence, with conviction, and to not hold back. And so with this control energy here with Jupiter and Capricorn, this is, I'm going to have to shout out my dear friend, Mary. You all hear about her a lot. If you watch my Cosmic Climates, she really pointed out this, the, the stillness here. So just that that ability to, because the energy has been a lot on so many levels, internally, externally, I've been on the go, go, go. So many people have been go, go, go. And we have to remember in order to catch the wave, to catch that, that wave of frequency, that flow or the wave of alignment, we have to slow down, right? If we're going really, really fast, we might miss it. And at the end of the day, spoiler alert, we're never going to miss it. We're not going to miss our blessings. If we don't catch it this, this lifetime, we're, we're, we can maybe catch it next lifetime, but we're not going to miss it. So if you want to be in alignment with that, then slow down, have those moments within the day where you connect with your body, where you really take time to de-stress the body, to relax, to have a cup of tea, to listen to music, to have a glass of wine, whatever it is, right? To have that moment where you just come to this peaceful state. And when you're in those peaceful states, then you will receive, you know, that next step or that message or, you know, that, yeah, that connection, whatever is meant to, meant for you to receive at that time. And it might actually come through 
dreams. So actually I should plug, plug my dream live stream, which we are back on schedule this Wednesday on June 19th at 9 p.m. Eastern time here live on, on YouTube. We're going to talk about the people that show up in our dreams. I'm really excited. Nonetheless, you might receive this in dreams if you're so busy. And even those, like for me, I have my moments of de-stress. It's like 15, 20 minutes. And it's like, I'm right back into, you know, the thing, right? With parenting and all of the, and, you know, work and everything. And so even if I am slowing down, it's like, I make sure at, at some point I get that 15, 20 minute de-stress, um, fascial maneuver process in, and then I might have to make dinner or I might, it might be at the beginning of my day and I'm making breakfast. So I have been go, 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 as I've been saying. And recently I had a really profound aha moment come through my dreams, which it was a really, it was really private. So I don't think I'm going to share that one live, but maybe I'll share some aspect of it. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens in my dream space between now and Wednesday. If I don't have a dream prepared, I might, I will share some aspect of that possibly. And um, nonetheless, it's really important to slow down. Also, this is also woo, inviting us to um, honor our sense of power, right? So as I mentioned too, what goes around comes around having trust in that, right? If you are in a place right now, if your intentions are good, you've been moving with good intentions, you've been doing the quote unquote work and you are eager and excited and just ready to be of service, like and you're in that kind of space, know that with what's coming, especially this achievement energy, you know, that is, that's coming to you. What goes around comes around. It's coming to you, right? You've been putting in that, that energy. You've been doing a lot, right? And this is, uh, this is Zeus sitting on the world. And let me just tap in with this real quick. He's definitely meditating. It just feels like we're also in connection with the divine. So if you, again, can slow down, preferably meditate, right before bed or in the morning you can connect with this divine intelligence this divine masculine because i feel that the energy present right now is it is the, the divine masculine coming through to be of support which is interesting because we're in the energy of divine masculine and we're about to move into that feminine energy as far as cancer season as i said though in the beginning that i feel the energy of divine counterparts right and so there's emerging the divine masculine is here to be of service to, to the divine feminine right so the divine feminine is dominant from what i'm i'm getting with the um with the lunar cycle of gemini and coming into cancer season and venus and mercury in cancer i feel divine feminine taking the lead the emperor and the empress, right? And the empress is, from my perspective, the one who's really, you know, calling the shots. The queen is the one, you know, doing the thing. So I really feel that energy. And achievement simply is the foreshadow, the foreshadow of of what is to come, right? This is this is your legacy, right? And don't be afraid of that. Like this, to me, honestly. I connect with it as like, okay, achievement, even that, that word resonates and this cityscape or whatever this is, does not resonate with what I envision, but I, I can feel the strength and the power and the, the, uh, the foundation, the security of it. So I feel like that, even I feel our intentions, our success our levels of achievement are divinely protected here, right? As we connect with the new earth, it's here. I'm, I'm excited. I, like I said, I am, vis I'm home visiting family and friends here in Maryland. I spent 24 hours pretty much in Pennsylvania visiting my father and uh, my aunt and uncle. And that was really nice. And just things are different. Like the responses I'm getting from my father, from my mother is like very 
supportive in a way that I just, I feel really uncomfortable, but I'm in a space now where I just, I'm like, I'm taking it. Right. And that was something, I don't know if I wrote that in, in the, in my journal, I didn't, but I wrote it in my client's email and I was like, take what's yours. And that's not a matter of, you know, a, a bad thing. It's more so like, this is for you. Do not resist. Do not be like, oh, I'm good. You know, we want to help and be of service. But then when it comes time for people to like say, oh, I'm going to give you like $20 for this thing, or I want to donate to you. And you're like, no, don't worry about it. I'm great. It's like, mm, no, receive, right? This is a fair energy exchange, right? You know, it, it's like the giving, the, the feeling and the gift of giving, we love it so much. And so think about how much as light workers, as readers, as healers, as a, whatever you, it is that you do, right? Just being, just you, if you're watching this, I feel that you're someone who people just being in your presence, their energy is uplifted or it shifts something in general. Like, so you might not have to do anything. Like you might not be, you know, a tarot reader or astrologer, or, you know, whatever, but just being, people being in your presence, is elevating for them is this inspiring is activating in some way or maybe they just feel safe and so that feeling is so good when you can give that when you can give and share and so do them the honor to allow them to give and to feel that that gift that feeling of giving that's so important and that's something i had to really counsel myself with because i was definitely not being, you know, like I was like, oh, I don't need it. Don't worry about it. Because it, in a way it's like, it feels good kind of to do that because it's like, oh, you're good. Right. I don't need it. But it's like, I feel like that's ego. Right. That is like, you know, it's us being like, oh, don't worry about it. I got this. And it's like, no, they want to support you too. So nonetheless, coming to the energy of this week, I feel with, um, so I mentioned with Venus and Cancer, Venus and Cancer is such a lovely energy. I feel like this is like divine mother energy. And I love that I'm talking about Venus's transition into Cancer and divine mother energy at this point and Empress, because let me tell you, and I'm going to bring up Tara again. So I love the synchronicity of all of this. Green Tara is, while she is compassionate, and a divine mother and protectress, like she is a protectress. And whenever you see her say in pictures or if there's like a statue of her, the way you know it's green tar is because she's in the lotus position, but she has her right leg a little outstretched. So she's not fully in lotus position. She has her right leg outstretched because it is a, it is symbolism in the way in which, or for the fact that she's ready to go. Like her thing is like, she's lightning speed. She's lightning fast. She's this energetic energy here that we're seeing with the Aurora. And so when you call on her, when you chant her mantra, she is there in an instant. She's ready to go. And she's a bad bitch. Like she, if you read the English interpretation of her mantra, of her praises, I mean, it's, it's powerful. And so I just, I feel that energy with her. I feel that, that divine empress, that divine power. And I feel with the empress energy, it is the ability to hold that divine masculine, like that's there, but the divine feminine, the intuition, the psychic sensing that we all have, whether you identify as male, female or none, right? We all have that energy. And so she is able to, that, that she, the Empress energy is able to hold that, but lead with that softness, right? Which is why you will see her connected to the Empress connected to, you know, nature. So, which nature is kind of a bad bitch too. When you think about mother nature, it's like, Ooh, you know, you, you see the duality, you see the energy of the oneness within nature. So I just really vibe with that. All right. And so with that's Venus in Cancer, basically that's what I'm feeling. Mercury in Cancer, it feels like the messenger energy, the supporter, the assistant, 
the, yeah, just there, the, the handmaiden or the right hand, you know, um, person for Venus. And this is really, this, this, this aligns with the mythology of, um, Inanna or Ishtar in which when she was at the bottom of the underworld or before she even went into the underworld, she spoke with her, I believe handmaiden for lack of a better term. She spoke with her handmaiden and was like, Hey, if I don't return in this amount of time, you know, sin for me. And so the fact that Mercury is moving into uh, cancer right after Venus as Venus is as invisible. She had already had her death, right? At the bottom of the underworld, this this tracks this aligns right this i feel this right so i feel that mercury is here to be of assistance mercury is moving through um moving through cancer pretty quick in less than a month venus will be there in i may think a little over a month or just about a month and so them coming together on june 17th i feel there is a message or an exchange coming forth that is going to like harmonize us, bring us to bring, maybe bring our divine feminine masculine together in union in order to go forth and do what is necessary for this next season, whether it's just summer, whether it's the end of the year or whatever it may be. So it will be the connector, right? Whether that's you within yourself or maybe you with another. So of course, it doesn't have to be on June 17th. It could be any time this week, but I really feel the potency and, and maybe the activating element of this or the potential happening on June 17th. We also have Mercury. Mercury is squaring Neptune right before it enters Cancer. So again, there's a little bit of that ability or that experience of is this really real? Is this really true? Am I actually getting what it is that I deserve? Are my dreams and my wishes really coming true? Yes. As I mentioned in the previous cosmic climate, if it's too good to be true, then it's for you, right? Not my words. I didn't come up with that, but it stuck with me. I heard it from another reader and I aligned with that. I was like, oh yeah, that me as having someone having Venus and Mars conjunct in Pisces in the fifth house. I am a fantasy type person and a dreamer. And so I'm like, yes, yes, it is meant for me. I, I feel that. So that energy is carrying into this week. And I've been having some really sweet moments with that realization and that experience too. So I hope that you are really feeling into that if it's coming up for you and really taking a trip within that fantasy world because we can all use some sort of blissful, fun, imaginative journeys and pleasures. And it'd be even better if it comes through dreams because it really feels like really, really real. All right, so moving on to summer solstice, we have the sun right before the sun moves into Cancer. The sun will have this connection with Neptune. So again, there's more of that energy and the sun representing divine intelligence. So maybe there is, you, you might get that clarity of a connecting point, right? With, with Gemini, it is the curious archetype. It's the sign of curiosity, wanting to explore and learn and bring energies together and just understand more, right? It's, it's the opposite sign of Sagittarius that has pretty much the same exploratory quality to it. And with Gemini, it wants to, or it likes to see like, what's the connection, right? Which is where we get this networking or connecting energy with Mercury, right? The messenger going here and there and there and just soaking up all the information. And I know a few Geminis in my life and my daughter has a full moon in Gemini and she likes to, I don't know if she's done it recently, but when she was really little, she would like to think, take things apart. And, you know, Geminis can be very good with their hands, right? And they're, so um, I can see, you know, it's like they're taking things apart to see how they work and then putting them back together, right? And so getting an understanding of the details of the information, this is essential. This is a really big, powerful point of the journey because we are still in this energy of, oh, we have to decide on some things or we have to make a choice and act on that choice. And so we're in this point, especially coming up to these squares with Neptune or with, yeah, with Neptune, because there's also, if there's a square with Neptune, 
there was already a square with Saturn. So let's go back to see when the sun squared Saturn. Um, Mercury squared Saturn on the 12th. So what about the sun? Hmm. Maybe I missed that. It, it was, oh, it was two weeks before. So June 9th, nonetheless. So Saturn there, Saturn is there with Neptune. So Saturn is trying to make sense of everything, trying to like make things tangible and literally grasp them. Like there's everything's like one big mess here. How do we, you know, come to this aspect of like the dreams and the feelings and the, you know, ethereal energy of Pisces. And so with these squares to Neptune that again, it's like what we felt, what was somewhat tangible or what we kind of grasp from, from those connections with Saturn. Now the sun, Mercury and Venus ha are, you know, connecting with Neptune where it's like, Oh, everything's dissolved again. Or it's like there, it, which I feel like this is a beautiful experience and a gift because Neptune pretty much opens up our consciousness in a sense where it's like, oh, I can access this thing and holy shit, is this real? Is this possible? Right? So it dissolves our belief systems, which will allow us to expand further within our conscious or deeper within our consciousness or greater, whatever, all the things, right? Especially with it happening in Gemini um, or yeah, with the sun and Mercury and Venus when they're in Gemini and having those connections with, with um, Neptune and Saturn, right? And Jupiter's there in Gemini. So Jupiter's already like, yeah, let's expand. Let's go deeper. Let's understand. Let's like expand our consciousness and have this greater, you know, awareness of what is going on here, specifically in the Gemini parts of our life, if you want to really go deep with your own astrological energy here. So that the sun... And Neptune are having that, that moment. And then shortly after that, like a little over, almost three hours later, the sun will move into Cancer. And that is the beautiful moment of summer solstice, 4.50 p.m. Eastern time. And the I'm going to talk more about this, but what I'm really getting for summer solstice or Cancer season, and this is kind of us stepping into it once the moon, the new moon in Cancer happens, which that's going to be beautiful i'm assuming because the moon feels good in cancer of course that is going to be cancer season is going to be you know focused on creating the space for our intentions creating space for this here whatever this achievement is for you nourishing and nurturing those intentions and so if you join us in our ritual circle we're going to share you know how you can go about observing this and we're going to observe it together in a nice little simple ritual in the meeting in the circle and then you can carry that on into the summer solstice and continue to do that as much as you want during the summer so summer solstice in a nutshell is nurturing creating a thriving environment for our intentions for our seeds for the eggs i was talking a lot about eggs in the spring season so maximum fertility or maximum potential for, you know, like all the eggs we have, right? We have all the eggs in this basket. So how do we create a thriving, sustainable environment for it? So that's the vibe I'm getting for cancer season. And we will discuss, or I will share more on this. The next day on June 21st is the Capricorn full moon. Whoo! The moon does not do so well in Capricorn. I can say from my own astrology, I have a moon in Capricorn and it is intense, um, more so because the moon wants to express emotions and feel the feels and just wants to be vulnerable or it brings up the opportunity to be vulnerable because I know, you know, moon signs in cancer in itself it, it's, it's, it's a thing. Vulnerability is a thing. And of course, considering that cancer and Capricorn are opposite signs, but they're on the same axis. So they do have similarities. It's just expressed in different ways. You know, Capricorn being an earth sign, it has the ability to, you know, create boundaries, create walls, literally this energy to keep in our emotions and to keep ourselves safe. So that might be something that's coming up you know, in reference to what you may experience for this full moon. This is the peak of the 
uh, Gemini lunar cycle, right? So again, the choice, the decision, this full moon is probably going to bring that to light and it's going to be possibly uncomfortable. We're going to have to be vulnerable and that's okay, right? You can take your time with it. You may feel, you know, insecure about it, right? Or what could happen or the uncertainty of things, but we're here and we're going to, do, we're going to act on the choice that we choose. And again, know that you are divinely protected. And even though, honestly, I'm getting the message from my counsel about the divine protection, but I'm just looking at Zeus and I'm, I feel overwhelmed with that, but that's a personal thing. And with this achievement energy, that protection, right, of our, our legacy, of our seeds, of our service, it is protected. So don't worry about it too much. All right. And let's see. What else was I going to say about Capricorn cancer? Because I know that this video is getting long. And the divine counterparts is interesting with the moon far away from home, right? So this is a bit of the concept, the rationalization of the moon being in detriment in Capricorn, because if its home is in cancer, it's all the way on the other side of, you know, far away from its home, away from its resources, away from its comfort in a very cold environment. And so, yeah, it, the moon can feel a little bit off. It's in foreign territory. So this is literally symbolism of how we might be feeling in reference to the choice, the decision, the actions that we're going to take on that. And again, connecting with your that confidence, boldness, and your ability to have the power, everything, it's coming back around again for you in a positive way. And so remembering that and just remembering this, like the foreshadow of what you desire, what you're creating and building for yourself. And it's like, yes, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to do it. And, you know, that is, that's what I'm getting with this, this full moon energy. I feel I could go into more of this and considering Saturn and Cancer. So let me say this, in the beginning of the week with the moon and Capricorn, the moon is going to be, in, or I'm sorry, with the moon and Scorpio at the beginning of the week. So the moon moves into Scorpio on June 17th, right after Venus moves into Cancer. And then she will peak at her, or she'll reach her waxing gibbous phase in Scorpio on June 18th. Then June 19th in the afternoon, she'll move into Sagittarius. So while she's in Scorpio, the moon, which she's also not happy in Scorpio, but it's fine, right? Because what is happening is that there is a water trine, right? And a trine is a creative connection. So being that we have Venus and Mercury in Cancer, we have Saturn in in Pisces and also Neptune, we'll include Neptune. And then we have the moon in Scorpio. So the moon is actually getting support from Venus, right? If these are the two goddess energies and Venus is a benefic planet, right? And she's there bringing harmony, alignment, good vibrations. And she's in the home of Cancer. She's able to connect with the moon in Scorpio to really soften up this process of metamorphosis too, of, of that transformation. And speaking of that, we're seeing that in the scarab symbolism here. And so we're filled, we're being fulfilled with like all of these passions and desires and just, oh, like the beautiful energy of Scorpio that I love so much. And we're wanting to burst. Like there's, there's a lot going on, right? And so I feel with this water trine, it's creating this portal or this, this, yeah, this opening, this creative opening. And I, this is all just coming through. I think that what, what, I, what I'm getting here is that this is a little bit different for everybody. So if this resonates, if you connect to the water signs, the sacred geometry of a tetrahedron or tetrahedron or a triangle, you can access this energy, this creative energy of 
the water element, right? And this is beautiful because it's bringing us into the season of cancer, which is a water sign, right? And so that creative experience with the water energy can look like just doing some sort of intuitive practice, doing or doing something that, yeah, enhances your intuition, doing something creative, like some sort of creative expression, literally connecting with water. And I feel if you're feeling any tension right now, if you're feeling any emotional or mental unrest, physical pain, especially with what's going on and maybe the unknown territory that you're feeling so drawn to step into, that is a way to really support you in this process. And I feel that coming into its fullness at the full moon. So I feel this week connecting with that water energy in that way is going to be really powerful. Yeah, with the sun also in Cancer during that 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 full moon, right? So yeah, I feel I feel really good with this. Like I said, I could go, I could talk about so much more but I feel complete with this. And I think that I want to leave a lot of the guidance and, you know, what comes forth for you as far as synchronicities, as far as meditation and connecting with your spirit guides or counsel or the divine. I feel like that this is an opening to do that, to gain more insight on what this might mean for you at this time and how to take that next step. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Thank you for being here. If you like the video, please like the video. If you like my content, definitely subscribe so you can stay up to date. And that supports me as well. And I would love to hear your thoughts and perspectives in the comments. Again, I am facilitating a summer solstice ritual circle on Zoom this Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. The registration is free and the link is in the description of this video. I am offering 33% off my tarot readings, and which is a 45-minute tarot reading. And the tarot readings come with a ritual, a personal, personal divinely guided ritual for you. That's easy, and you can do it whenever you want. Um, if you have questions about that, let me know. But that's there, 33% off. And the 75-minute Zoom astrology reading, which is what I call astrological consultation is 33% off. And that also comes with a mini tarot reading, not a ritual, but you're going to have so many things to kind of have a heads up about and things will practices and techniques and, and whatever is necessary for you at this moment in your life. And what you have coming up, that's going to come through the reading. So you'll have that guidance there too, for you. So all of that information is in the description of this video. Thank you so much for being here. Have a beautiful solstice and have a happy full moon as well. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.